This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2022 Puma travel trailer. The model is uh, 32 BHQS. So this is not a floor plan or a sales video. It's a how-to video. I'm just going to go over some of the features and show you how they work. Okay. First of all, you got power stabilizer jacks. Here's the switch here, and there's the uh, with the motor under there. You can see it. Um, one switch controls both rear, and another switch up front controls both front jacks. Uh, now, let me look here just to see what type we have here. Okay, so these ones, if you look at the other end of it, you can actually crank them manually in an emergency if you have to. So you can actually operate them from the opposite side, okay? Now you have a, a griddle here, or a grill here. This pulls out obviously, and this is the quick connect fitting right here. So this um, plugs into the back of the, of, the gr of the grill, and then the other end plugs into this quick connect fitting right here. And that's how you get LP to the uh, appliance, okay? Uh, dorm refrigerator, works on AC power, okay? Two bedrooms, or two bedrooms, two doors. This way you can, oh, that one's locked from the inside. But uh, you have two entry doors. Um, let's see, you have a power awning with LED strip. You have outside speakers. You have a TV signal out plus power plus a, a bracket to hang your TV. Um, this right here is the, the vent for the range hood. So there's a baffle in there. You have to push, flip it open with your fingers when you want to vent to the outside. So just make sure you, if you're venting to the outside, you free up that baffle so it flaps freely. This is the fresh water tank fill right here. The most common way to get water to the trailer is city water hookup, which is on the other side. I'll show you that when I get over there. But uh, if you're camping at a place that doesn't have camp or doesn't have plumbing on the campsite, you can pre-fill this tank and then use the onboard pump to pump the water. Okay, this is your water heater from the outside. The thing to know about this is. This works on both gas and electric, right? So right here, there's a switch here. This is a rocker switch on and off. That controls the electric heating element that's behind this cover here, just so you know. All right. The other switches are inside the trailer. The this is the gas burner, obviously. Uh, never run this without water in it, without water in the tank, the, the water heater tank, okay? Uh, you can drain it right here at this drain. This is a drain plug with an anode rod attached to it. So it takes an inch and a 16 six-point socket to uh, remove it. And like I said, the other controls are inside. We'll, we'll look at those when we get in there. This is a black tank flush here. Okay. So after you've dumped your, your black tank, we'll show you the, the valves on the other side. You leave the valve open on the black tank. Then you can hook the hose from the dump station right here, turn it on and it'll spray out the inside of your black tank, clean off the sensors, that sort of thing, just give you a really good uh, flushing out. So it's a good thing to do if you if you got a working hose at the dump station, that's a good thing to do. Okay, I think you got this. Uh, your hitch is right here. We'll show you how this operates when you pick up. We're still cleaning the trailer obviously. Oh, that's a Husky center line weight distribution hits with built-in sway control so we'll show you how that works this is uh, your other switch for your front power stabilizers okay that's part of your hitch you've got two uh, LP tanks you've got a a power tongue jack here up and down and you got a hitch light on it if it ever fails you can pull this plug out and use a three-quarter inch socket or a crank on there and actually operate it manually which is a good thing you got deep cycle marine battery here, and there's the kill switch for the battery if you need to shut it off. Okay. Not sure what we have here. Let me look. Okay, this is storage. Um, if you, this is the bedroom in here, obviously. This is this room. I'll show you from the inside, but this is plumbed and wired for a washer dryer combo. If you wanted to add a washer dryer combo in here. Uh, you can do it. I'll show you that more of that when we get inside. This is just your dump hose right here. 
So right now he's got it hooked up to the city water hookup. I told you the most common way to get water to the trailer is through city water hookup. Um, you, just, you just turn it on you're all set. Of course if there's not plumbing at the campsite you can pre-fill the tank. I showed you the, the fill on the other side. Turn on your water pump and you can do it that way. This is a, a outside shower. Got your valves here, gray valves, right? Okay. You have a 50 amp power cord with reducers, so you can reduce it down to 30 or 20, whichever you need to do. Moving down. That is just the furnace uh, exhaust there. Another gray tank valve right here and this is campground cable and satellite through right here um, you can see that this has a this one is pre-wired for a backup camera so if you want to add a backup camera you get the same kind that fits that housing as a Furion so make sure you get the right one if you're going to do it You've got a ladder, which is great because the manufacturer state you should inspect your roof every 90 days. So you want someone to go up there and look around, be very careful, make sure there's no cracking or separation at the sealant where water could get through. Make sure there's no damage to any of the roofing attachments or roofing material that was caused by low branches or road debris flipping up there. Just give it a good look over and make sure there's nothing wrong with it. You're just protecting your investment, staying ahead of things. So it's really a good thing to do. Let's go inside here. If the AC is running. Yep. Um, let me get some light in here. There we go. Okay, so this is your control panel here. Um, you can see that you have your, your power awning switch right here. You have your three slide rooms here. Okay. Um, your water heater to light. I showed you how to light it on, or turn on the electric in the lower left hand corner. Well, if you want to run it on gas, you would do that. Um, you've got a water pump here. I told you the water pump is for pumping water out of the fresh water tank. It's also used to winterize the trailer. Battery charge, fresh water's got a third in it. Black is uh, empty, gray one and two are empties. Okay. Um, simpler thing here, we got the same thing. Um, let me see what else we've got before I move from this position here. Okay, so here we have your TV, obviously, your fireplace, and your your stereo here. <coughs> Excuse me. So you have your TV remote right here. This is for the stereo, and this one here is for the the fireplace. I just haven't got it opened. I don't know. Okay. All right, so we'll start with the fireplace. This is the remote right here, of course. So this is a space heater. So um, you look right there, it says low. That's a fan speed. High, that's a fan speed. Okay, very simple. Now, you could also change the color of the crystals, right? And then you can change the color of the fire there so it's uh there's a lot you can do with it. it also has a timer so you can set it to turn on and off when you want the neat thing about this is that it runs on campground power so you've got a limited supply of lp so on those days where it's not quite uh, cold enough to run the furnace you can just uh you know you can just basically turn this on and use the campground electricity instead of your lp gas and take the chill out of the room okay the next one here, this is your, your stereo here. So, you have uh, AM, FM radio, okay? You got Bluetooth, so you can stream wirelessly from your phone to your tablet. You got a USB, so you can put all your albums on one USB drive and take them with you. Um, you have two speaker zones, one is inside the trailer, two is outside the trailer. Um, you also have a HDMI in, so if you wanted to go into the machine, let's say you have a portable Blu-ray player or something, you could go straight into the system 
through that if you needed to. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. These are these are the legs for the TV. I don't know why he kept these here, but this obviously hangs on the wall. You don't need the legs. Now let's look back here and see what we've got. So this this actual um, bracket swings out. Let me look at it from this side, and it actually locks in the locking position. So make sure you click it till it locks uh, when you're getting ready to travel, so it doesn't flip around. Um, this. Let me see here. Okay, I don't know if you can see this. Let me let me get around here. Hold on. See right there, there's a green LED. That should always be on. That's a digital signal booster for the antenna. I could shut it off, if you can see it here. I could shut it off with that button, but you don't want to do that. You want it on uh, when you're using the antenna. This is just telling us you're pre-wired for a uh, public Wi-Fi signal booster here. There'll be another place on the roof where you attach it. Basically, it consists of an antenna on the roof and then a router sitting right here. Uh, it's just telling you it's pre-wired. If you're interested, you can go to kingconnect.com and look at the different products. Always choose a product that has the antenna on the roof. That's very important when you're doing a signal booster. So anyway, that's what that's for. All right, let me see what we got here. Okay, here's the range hood. We talked about the uh, the the baffle in the vent, right? You turn on the fan, you want that baffle flapping freely. You got a light here. Your microwave works like any other microwave. Um, this is your range here. I don't know if he's got the gas turned on. That's what I was just thinking about here. Well, we'll have to see. I'll talk you through it either way. You've got a sparker here on the left. You turn it clockwise to spark it. Then you got three knobs and three burners, obviously. Then you have a uh, uh, the oven knob right here. So the farthest one to the right is for the oven. So let's see if he's got it turned on or the gas turned on. Yeah, he does. So right there you see it very simply. Now when it comes to the oven itself, down here at the bottom, all the way to the back is a pilot light. I'll see if I can spark it so you can see it. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Okay. So you'll basically you'll you'll go to the flame here which means pilot you'll depress it keep it depressed then you'll light the the uh, pilot light back there after the pilot light lights you still hold this for another 10 seconds or so to heat up the thermocouple then you go to operating temperature when you shut it off the pilot light goes out so you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven the refrigerator is 12 volt DC compressor type refrigerator so it runs on 12 volts. Okay. This device down here is your power converter. So this converts AC to DC power. Um, let's see, it opens here, I believe, yes. So you can see down at the bottom here you have regular circuit breakers, 120 AC like you see at home. And this is sort of like the distribution center here. And then the, the AC power is set up here to the to the 12 volt side and it's converted to 12 volt DC. You can see you got regular fuses here and they're labeled over here. So um, that's where the DC power comes from. This is also a battery tender so it, it'll sense how much energy your battery has and needs when, when, when you're plugged in that is and it'll send up enough uh, 12 volt DC to keep your battery charged. Also when you're pulling it down the road your tow vehicle your tow vehicle's alternator charges the battery also. So when you're plugged in, this is charging your battery. When you're towing it, your tow vehicle's doing that. So keep that in mind. This is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green. If it goes off, it's detected a carbon monoxide buildup or LP gas. Also, if it starts beeping very slowly, the same tone but very slowly, it's telling you that the battery's low. I'll just put it through the pace so you can hear it. LP is good. It's carbon monoxide coming up. Excellent, and then the low battery alarm. And then back to green. It should always be green. If it's not, get it serviced, okay? It's important. All right, so let me see here. So this is a, what do we have here? This is a jackknife sofa. Sofa that jackknife's flat as a bed. You can pull the poles out from your, your table and set it on these cleats and use this as a bed also. Um, let's 
thermostat somewhere here. I think I'm probably walking right past it. Oh, it's over here. Let me just look real quick here. This is the analog thermostat. It's on cool right now and, and auto. Always keep it on auto for the fan. You got heat, off, fan, and cool. Fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. Of course, heat is the is the L, of the propane furnace, and then cool is full air conditioning. All righty. Okay, so we have a a, a half bath here. That's where the door uh, the other door leads to. Um, GFCI. Remember, all the plugs in the trailer are wired through a GFCI. Uh, the thing you remember about RV toilets is the flush pedal here, and the black tank directly below. You can't you can't use this dry. So after you hook get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water. You're going to come in here. You're going to put a dose, a chemical, in there, and then you're going to step on the pedal until you put about a gallon of water or so into the black tank. Then you're all set to use it. You never use it dry because the smell will be terrible. Plus, it can get clogged up. So keep that in mind. This is just your bunk room. Self-explanatory. Got a top bunk. This will jackknife flat, so you actually have four bunks in here if you want them. And you have TV hookup and that sort of thing also. An emergency window here. Okay. So going forward now, we have the other bathroom. The main bathroom. And we have the same, same basically the same thing, except we have a shower. Works like any other shower. The toilet, it's the same principle. It's the same model. You have to put chemical and water in it before you start using it. You have to do that. If you don't, you only you only not do it once. Okay, so now we're in the master bedroom here. We're still cleaning up here, of course. This is this these styrofoam are just they come out of the vent when you turn on the air conditioner the first few times when you're prepping it. So that's where we're at now with this. Um, I showed you that this is a place you can put a washer dryer combo. A stackable if you want to so that's what this is or a closet you know if you wanted to put another well you can hang here I guess so you wouldn't need another rod but you can hang clothes in there and of course you have another wardrobe over here you have some storage underneath the bed and you have hookups for your television and there's a vacuum plate here so you could put a bracket there uh, if you chose to so you're in good shape now this 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 is a, a, a 50 amp system. The reason that is because you can it's pre-wired for a second air conditioner. So if you want to add another air conditioner to the bedroom, it fits right here where the vent is. We would remove the vent. The pre-wired is there, but we remove the vent on the inside garnish and the outside, and we put an air conditioner in there and uh, go from there. So that's why it's a 50 amp system because it's pre-wired for a, a second AC if you want it. If you do a lot of time in the south. Um, or the southwest is it's uh, probably a good idea but it's really up to you so let me look around here I think I covered everything yes 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 okay so let me shut this off I got the AC going plus the plus the fireplace okay so first of all I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit Second of all, remember what I said about inspecting the roof every 90 days. That's very important to do. And uh, right now, this has been dewinterized. The uh, the antifreeze has been purged from the system. It's filled with water and it's ready to be camped in. So we're all set to go. Okay. Thanks.